Family Christmas Tour featuring contemporary Christian artist Jamie Grace with special guest Morgan Harper Nichols and Manic Drive comes to the Benton Civic Center on Saturday, December 10th at 7 p.m. Tickets are available, general admission $25 each, and VIP seating for $35. And available through a link on the Civic Center website, BentonCivicCenter.com. Point nine, the Vine, in conjunction with Ariasports.net, proudly presents the Sports Cow. The Sports Couch is the area's only locally produced weekly sports show that is live on FM radio and also streamed live on both of our websites at Ariasports.net and WBYN.org. Who will be on the couch this morning? Let's find out. The Sports Couch is on the air right now. And good morning once again, sports fans. It is 8.30, time for another edition of The Sports Couch. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio, along with Danny Ounceman. We're in the month of December, and boy, basketball really starts to heat up now, doesn't it, Danny? We had a lot of games around the area last night, and it's going to be fun, isn't it? Basketball season is in full tilt. It sure is. And we have got uh, six coaches on the show with us today. We're going to be talking to Coach Doug Creel of the Mount Vernon Rams here in just a moment. Also going to visit today with Andy Fahrenbacher of Salem Wildcats, John Kraus of Oakville, also Shane Garner of Cesar Valier, Doug Miller of Gallatin County, and Clint Weinmiller of the Hamilton County Lady Foxes. So a good mix of coaches on the show this morning. Got a nice group lined up. Should have some interesting insight here this ah, morning. Ah, we really will. We'll get to the scores for you in just a minute. Of course, you can always see the scores on our sports website at areasports.net. But right now, let's bring in our first guest this morning, and that is the head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams, Doug Creel. Good morning, Doug. Morning, guys. Hey, good to have you on the show today. Last night, you opened up South 7 Conference play, and it was the home opener in the new gym. Uh, unfortunately, Cahokia had something to say about that and spoiled it by beating the Rams 42-24, to but... Um, it was good to finally play a game there, and um, I, there was a lot of things you could take out of it that you had to be pleased with, though, despite the loss. Wouldn't you agree? Well, you know, I only had a three-mile drive after it was over. That was a plus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's true. I didn't have uh, didn't have far to go. Didn't have to go through downtown, but uh, I thought we played well for a half. Uh, we seemed to struggle third quarter a little bit. You know, we only made two baskets the whole second half, and that was by our sophomore guard, Terry Ons Blaylock. But uh, I think uh, when people are bigger, stronger, uh, have more length, more athletic, uh, you got to work twice as hard to get open. And, and our, a couple of our guys kind of ran out of gas, and uh, they just kind of wore us down. And, uh, you know, w- we got to hit some shots, too, to keep the game close. And when we don't, hit perimeter shots, and we shoot a little better than we did, but uh, we didn't make them last night, and we can't score around the basket because of their length and athleticism. Uh, it makes it tough the way we're going to keep digging. I thought our kids played very, very hard. I thought they hustled. Um, the game got away from us a little bit in that third quarter again, and then once we had to start chasing them, that's a problem. Yeah, I agree with you. And the size definitely was a problem last night. I mean, uh, Kokia came in at 6'6", 6'6", 6'5", in their starting lineup. And those people who are watching our live video stream right now on areasports.net, you can see the opening tip last night uh, at the gym. And you can see the size uh, advantage that Kokia has out there on the floor. And many times last night, your Rams team would get the ball inside, get it down low in the post, but then still were not in a position to shoot only because of the size advantage that Kokia had. Well, hey, if you look at the college game, you look at the next level, length is very important. Uh, they don't have guys like me playing at Kentucky, and there's a reason for that. Link, length and athleticism is a, uh issue, uh, and right now, you know, we don't have a whole lot of it. That doesn't mean that we can't be competitive. Uh, you know, we, we continue to have to get better. You know, I was disappointed in our third quarter that we came out and had like four turnovers in a row. Thank goodness that they threw it away on the other end. Uh, or it could have really gotten ugly quick. But uh, we have to keep the game close. we got to keep our turnovers around eight. And, uh, you know, we let that get away from us a little bit. And, like I said, they just wore us down. We had a couple guys come up with some cramps. I don't think they're drinking enough or eating enough. But uh, that's something I'll have to 
issue I'll have to deal with. But, hey, I was proud of our effort. We just got to beat somebody like Cahokia. We just got to play a lot better. Well, Danny and I were sitting here talking before we went on the show, and, and Danny, you and I were discussing the fact that uh, Mount Vernon's playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores, uh, both on JV level and even a lot of sophomores at the varsity level. And going to take some lumps right now, but uh, the, the future looks good because when this group continues to grow and has experience, it's going to make a big difference, isn't it? Well, you know, Randy, well, the, oh, I didn't mean to cut ahead. you off, Doug. Yeah, no, the, okay. the, the big thing about that is right now at this level, and a lot of people don't realize this, just a physical maturity and stature of these kids you take a freshman and a sophomore against seniors if i'm a senior and i can't school a sophomore i'm going to be pretty upset mm-hmm. yeah 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 doug you got a lot of youth in there right now but you know it's going to pay off in the long run well i hope so our jv played uh played well and, they did and, they played uh, extremely well yeah um uh, and you know at the times you know we had we played four sophomores out there and a freshman. And one time I looked out there, I think we may have had three sophomores and a freshman in prime time, which doesn't bode well score wise. But uh, the thing is, they got to continue to get better, and and I think they will. All our all our sophomores and freshmen will continue to get better. Uh, they're just getting thrown in the fire a little earlier than they uh, probably need to be, but that's just the way things are. Yeah, you know, sometimes that just happens in programs. Uh anymore uh it seems like the some of the older kids go away from programs doug and it's uh sometimes you learn by having your feet held to the fire don't you well it's gonna make me a better coach here's the thing uh i'm not gonna blame our kids when things don't go right uh you know uh, i gotta do a better job of coaching i gotta find ways to give us better chances to score and and that's the good the positive thing about it because Hey, I've got to pay attention to every little detail. I can't just throw it to uh, Braden Fitzgerald in the space and let him go make a play anymore. That'd be nice. But now, you know, now I've got to pay attention to all the little bitty things, and hopefully that will pay off, make me a better coach, and make us a better team uh, down the line. Well, you know, uh, Doug, when you get challenged, like you said, uh, turnovers and uh, putting the ball in the hole, making free throws and things like that loom very big when you've got a young, inexperienced group sometimes, and uh, that's just part of learning. You're darn right. Hey, we're going to take some lumps, but hey, one, one thing I feel like our kids can do and I do, hey, we're going to get in that ditch and dig. That's the only thing I know to do. That's right. Well, I think uh, one thing that we noticed, though, Doug, is that this group of kids, they're coachable. And that is so important in high school athletics. You've got to have a group of kids that are coachable. So even though they don't maybe have the size or the experience right now, uh, they're listening to you and, and Coach Gamber. I mean, they're coachable kids, and that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Well, hey, I, listen, i got great kids, and that's the important thing. And, uh, you know, we're going to and, – and they are. I think they're trying to get better. Hey, nobody throws the ball away on purpose, and nobody misses it shot on purpose and we're just going to continue to work try to get better yeah well the answer to a trivia question from last night who scored the rams first points in the new gym and that goes to o'shea harden and that was a nice steal nice layup he got to get you on the board wasn't it well i didn't even realize that o'shea played well uh i think he ran out of gas a little bit Mm -hmm. and that hurt us because they crushed us on the boards in the late third quarter fourth quarter and I think a little bit of that was uh, O'Shea cramped up, and because uh, early in the game he really got on the boards. He's our one athlete. I was going to say with size, he, I don't even know if he's six foot, but <laughs> uh, he does give us a little athleticism, a little rebounding around the basket, and uh, you know we got to keep him healthy. Uh, you know, Weston Brockhouse has been nursing a hip pointer and foot issues, and we got to keep him healthy and get him a lot of practice. And uh, Jake had a tough night, but hey, we're going to keep we're going to keep plugging. I I've told them before, every one of those guys is going to have tough nights. And uh, hey, when that's over, it's over. We're, we're going to go back to work and, and see what we can do. Well, next week you go on the road to Marion, and Marion lost last night to Centralia, fifty to twenty-five. And elsewhere in the conference, it was Belleville Altoff over Carbondale, eighty-five fifty-two. So again, the conference is loaded this year. As you well know, uh, yeah, I, I realize that, and we're on the bottom end of it, so we got to fight our way up. Well, did that Marion uh, Centralia score surprise you a little, Doug? Marion, you know, headed five and zero up there to Centralia, and I think they got a rude awakening last night. 
uh, they got a real rude awakening. <laughs> they got a rude awakening to our conference. Yeah. That... Hey, well, Centre Centre is down from what they were, but they're not downtown. Uh, you know, I think we've gone down a lot, but uh, hey, they've just gone down from a team that won twenty eight, twenty nine games. So uh, they can play. Centre uh, is very, very well coached. They guard the crap out of you. They do have guys that can handle it and score and and. Uh, I, uh, I look forward to going down to Marion. I think we can play them better. You know, they may, they may play out of their minds down there, and if they do, you know, we'll, we'll move on and worry about Lovejoy and Carbondale and Waterloo. But uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge, to playing them a little better and, and uh, see what we can do down there. All right, real quick, let's have you put your athletic director hat on because today you've got a couple of freshman games there at uh, the high school. You've got a 9 o'clock girls freshman game this morning and then a 10.30 boys game, right? Yep, we've got uh, Salem girls in here at 9 a.m., one game only. And after that, we're going to play uh, a boys freshman, boys sophomore. Of course, the sophomore game, we'll be playing freshmen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's okay. We're, when, you know, when you're thin at the top, everybody has to move up and you try to, try to find places. The more you can play, the better. So we got a lot of young kids playing up. So, but that's just the way it is when you struggle a little bit. Yeah. All right, Doug. We'll appreciate you joining us Thank this morning. You, All right. Have a good weekend. Thank you guys. All right. Yep. See you. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. It's Doug Creel, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams, also the athletic director at Mount Vernon. Again, they lost last night to Cahokia 42 to 24. Playing a lot of young guys, but uh, hey, give them, give them time. Have patience because uh, they, that's going to be a pretty good group here in a couple of years. But uh, and they're already seeing some improvement since the start of the season. It just takes a little time, doesn't it, Dan? Oh yeah. You know, uh, like I said. When you're playing a bunch of senior-laden teams and you're yeah. a sophomore, if I'm on the other team and I'm a senior and I can't school a sophomore, I'm not going to be very impressed. Yeah, especially when they got a five- or six-inch size advantage, too, like they did last night with Well, you know, <laughs> just uh, physical maturity, ability. Yeah. Uh, you know, you watch these kids. I watch kids, Randy, from the junior mm-hmm. high level all the way up through the high school level, even into the college level. We get involved with a few games, you know, and yeah. – uh, just you see these kids one next and next year you look at this and you think is that the same kid from last year <laughs> sometimes the change in one year is pretty drastic no, you're right you're absolutely right you've got scores from around the area last night let's let you run through the scoreboard right now all right crab orchard defeated pope county 75 51 effingham 90 charleston 66 in a great game down in saline county last night el dorado defeats gallatin county 47 44 in overtime Fairfield Mules get a victory over Sisney, 71-56. Galatia picks up a win over Carrier Mills, 54-44. Lawrenceville, 68. Red Hill, 59. Marshall, that's a team to watch in this 2A bracket. Uh, 85, Hudsonville, 59. Modern Day, once again, looks like they're pretty strong, 82-53. North Clay, 48. Sandoval, 42. Odin 61, South Central 49, Paris defeats Newton 45-43, Potoka over Clay City 73-28, Potoka's got a lot of returning starters, uh, look for them to make a pretty good run in that 1A bracket, Robinson 72, Olney 46, Taylorville 49, Salem 46, T-Town defeats Breeze Central 51-41, in a game I saw last night, Thompsonville defeated NCOE 71 to 55. Jabot 64, Madison 39. Wayne City picks up a win last night over Grayville 52 to 40. Waterloo 47, Jerseyville 43, Weber Township 79, Ziegler 47. In some tournament action, Brian Gamber gets his first win at Woodlawn last night of, over a tough Greenville team 50 to 49 in overtime. New Athens 54, four, Flora 44, Pinckneyville 51, Carlisle 44, and Oakville 64, Hillsboro 45. That sets up an Oakville Pinckneyville championship there at Kaskaskian, the Carlisle Kaskaskian tournament. Mm-hmm. Down at Ducoin, Ducoin defeated Lovejoy. That's a team Doug Creel just talked about playing here in a few few days. Mm-hmm. 70 to 49. Cairo defeats Sesser 55-53. From the Goreville Inter- Invitational, Benton moves to 3-0 and with a 60-53 victory over A.J. last night. Hamilton County gets their first win of the season. They defeat Hardin County 73-67. And 
in a game that was quite a game, I guess, Randy, this was a marathon. There was 55 fouls called in this contest. <laughs> Johnson City trailed at halftime by 17 points, and they come back and defeat Goreville 78-75. Johnson City's 3-0 and heading into this afternoon's matchup with Benton, so basically that'll be the championship game this and afternoon. And, yeah, the Indians are a bit of a surprise so far this year. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. they've got a foreign exchange kid, about a 6'5 foreign exchange kid that's moved in, and I think he's becoming quite a player for yeah. this Johnson City team. Yeah. From the Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro defeated Harrisburg. This kind of surprise, 76-57. Not that Murphy won, but by the amount. Yeah. Uh, down at Steelville, Steelville defeated Trico, 58-50. Chester, 72. Sparta, 48. Redbud, 56. Shawnee, 19. And over at Lebanon, Lebanon, 77. Father McGivy, 52. Trenton, 61. Columbia, 52. So that kind of wraps up a lot of the action you mentioned the fact that the uh, championship game of the carlisle kaskaskin tournament is tonight it'll be oakville against pinckneyville and when we come back we are going to visit with coach john kraus of the oakville rockets as the sports couch continues stay tuned we'll be right back It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. Amy's Sweet Gallery in downtown Fairfield serves top-of-the-line cookies, cupcakes, cakes, rolls, and more delicious home-baked goodies for your family, church, business, wedding, holidays, birthdays, you name it. Amy's Sweet Gallery uses third-generation secret family recipes with a hint of love in every bite. Amy's Sweet Gallery is located at 108 East Main in Fairfield, and their phone number is 842-3754, and their website is amysweetgallery.com. A scoop, a pin, a dash and a drop homemade goodness with just one stop amy sweet gallery in fairfield most of us tend to take our printed materials for granted but it's hard to imagine life today without print printing is communicating whether it's promotional operational or administrative we're here to meet your printing needs peacock print and marketing has been serving the people in southern illinois since 1977 we're located at 1112 jordan street in mount vernon Our phone number is 242-3157. Our website is PeacockPrinting.com. We believe in honoring God by serving our clients through print and marketing and helping them reach their full potential. Welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and streaming live worldwide on both of our websites, live video streaming at areasports.net and live audio streaming at WVYN.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio, along with Danny Anselmuth. And, of course, as we touched upon a moment ago, tonight is the championship game of the Carlisle Kaskaskian Tournament. And what a final it ought to be tonight, as the Oakville Rockets will take on the Pinckneyville Panthers. Joining us on the phone right now is the head coach of the Rockets, John Krause. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning, Randy. How are you guys doing? Good. Great to have you on the sports couch. And your Rockets are off to a a good start. You're exactly where you want to be. You're in that title game tonight at Carlisle. Yeah, real good Real good start. Good week. Um, Really good tournament for us to start the year, find out about our guys and things that we need to work on going forward. And um, tonight should be a fun one with with Panthers and and Bobby and his team. Just the way they go about things and the way they, they play the game of basketball the right way and Um, We will definitely learn a lot tonight about where we're at and um, what we need to do going forward. Yeah, let's talk about how both teams got there tonight. Uh, Your Rockets beat New Athens 74-45. You also got a win over the Florida Wolves 66-47, and you beat Hillsborough 64-45. On the other hand, Pinckneyville got there by beating Woodlawn 62-38. They also beat Greenville 43-29, and they beat Carlisle 51-44. So, again, a good matchup in store for you tonight. But, You've got that secret weapon back for his senior year, Noah Frederking. Yeah, he's uh, he's a good guy to have on your side when you go into these kind of games. You know, uh, <coughs> he got his two thousand point uh, the first game of the season, and and uh, he's just had a great career for us. And and um, you know the teams that he's been on have been successful. And 
and that's that's the most important part, obviously. But uh, yeah, he's he's a nice card to have in your deck when you're when you're going into into big games, and um, so uh, we'll hopefully he'll take advantage of that, and our team will as well. Well, he has always been able to rise to the occasion in the big games too uh, for your Rocket team, and it's nice that he's uh, made his decision as where he's going to go play college ball at too, going to go to the University of of Evansville, and probably good to have that decision over with so that he doesn't have so many people bugging him and bugging you, right? Yeah, I think I think it was a, a weight off his shoulders, um, you know, early this year or this spring or this uh, this uh, fall when he made his decision and and um, that you know uh, I, I just think it's a great fit for him. Uh, I think the coaching staff there at Evansville and with Marty Simmons and the way they go about doing things is, is similar to the, the type of player he is and the things and the, the uh, values that he's learned here at Oakville High School uh, will transfer right over into there. And I, I think it's a great fit for him, and I, I'm sure that he's relieved that it's over and, and just can go out and have fun and play and know that he's got a place to play basketball next year. Yeah, I think he'll fit right into the Purple Aces. What do you think, Danny? I think he'll be a good fit over there. And, you know, it's uh, always nice to get kids when they are able to do, accomplish great things, be able to continue, and he's going to get his education paid for over there. But, you know, John, uh, what what does it mean to your school and all the kids to be able to have a player like that on your team? Yeah, it's you know he he's just been he's just been a great kid for our for our program and our school and I mean more so from the basketball standpoint is just the the attention that he's gotten um, has been good for our school and and um, you know the way he goes and handles himself with with the media and different things that he's had to deal with um, he handles himself in a first class way and uh, he comes from a great family and and uh, they they just do things the right way and he makes good decisions and. And a very smart kid, and so it's just a, it's just one of those things that it's it's good for your high school and it's good for the community to have a kid like that. that and, and not only that, but the, the way he handles his teammates and the way they respect him, and um, you know he's just been on some great teams, and uh, it's just been a lot. It's been a good ride for for the three and that you know started his fourth year now, and uh, I just look forward to the, the last season with him. Well, uh, talk about this matchup a little bit tonight. You know, uh, every time you look up, it seems like uh, Pinckneyville and Oakville over the years have battled for a lot of tournament titles and everything else. Talk a little bit about uh, what the atmosphere will be there tonight and what kind of game you're expecting. Well, I think the I would expect the gym to be full. Um, I, You know, we've had three games now. We played Saturday afternoon at like 3 o'clock, which, you know, our girls are playing in the championship game over at Nashville. And, then we played on 6 o'clock on our next two nights. and So I don't, you know, there's been a lot of our fans here at Oakville that have had a hard time maybe, you know, based on other things going on with other things, you know, other sports or, you know, girls basketball games or junior high games and just 6 o'clock starts with work. And so I don't know if we've had, you know, a lot of our fans have had the opportunity to come out yet to see us. And so I think tonight being a Saturday night, not much going on, 7.30, um, I think we'll have a great crowd, and you know how Pinkneyville travels. They're always going to have a great crowd. I thought they had a good crowd on Wednesday night for a 7.30 game against Carlisle. They had a nice crowd, and, and, you know, I've been to Benton for so many years, and I've seen the crowds that they bring down there. So I expect it to be um, pretty full tonight, great atmosphere, and, you know, Bobby's going to bring his kids ready to play. They always are. They're going to play extremely hard, and um, they're winners, you know, and that's the one thing I stress to my kids the last couple of days in practice and I will stress to them this morning in our walkthrough is that you know they're going to come to the game tonight expecting to win and they're going to they're, they're just a, they're a winning tradition they're a winning program and they expect to win this game tonight and you know that's what we're trying to get our kids to, to be that way as well to, to expect to win and um, so I you know those are the things in hand and, and Bobby will game plan and do a great job with his kids and they'll execute the things that he wants them to do so it will be tough for us um, but on the other side, I think it would be tough for them as well. And so that should lead to a good game. Well, you're right, John. Uh, you talked about the winning. Uh, you know, sometimes teams, uh, well, I always say winning breeds winning and losing breeds losing. And uh, if you're in that losing cycle, it's pretty tough to teach kids to win. Uh, that's a big challenge. And uh, the Oakville Rocket program over there, you took over for a very successful Dave Luchtefeld, and you've just kept things rolling right on along over there. And uh, you talk about the success. Uh, Oakville has had lots and lots of success. You have had a lot of great teams over there. 
you've got a girls team over there now and a boys team, and I'm sure those teams play off each other a little bit, don't they? Yeah, I think so. I think that you know this this group that we have now is, and the girls, you know, the girls program is is on the rise again. You know, we had a few years where we we had some down times there, which is going to happen in small schools. You know, it's just, it's just the way it's going to be. And our girls program is off to a great start this year. And, and um, so, yeah, they're, I think they do feed off each other. You know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some chatter in the hallways during the school days about, you know, which, you know, the girls winning, you know, last night or the night before or whatever. And, and um, so I, I think that's a good, healthy thing for your program, you know, to, to make those kids, you know, compete against each other, you know, sometimes. And uh, so, yeah, when you, I've noticed that over the years too, when you have, um, you know, other programs in your school that are successful at the same time that you're going, that it only helps. Oh yeah, I'm I'm like you. I definitely think there's a little uh, fun ribbon and stuff goes on in the hallways, and they feed off each other. I think it just makes everybody stronger when everybody's having success, and uh, th- those are always some good times. And like you said, especially in a small school, you need to enjoy those because there is peaks and valleys, uh, just based upon talent level and kids and the amount of kids that there is to draw from and things like that. Sometimes those things are out of a coach's control, but when you're on one of them good runs, you need to enjoy it, don't you? Yeah, that's, that's, that's for sure right. You know, if we have 180 students in our school, and so, you know, you're going to have peaks and valleys. And there's going to be those times where things are going really well, and, and I think, you know, we're on a, a good stretch here, three or four years in a row, where we've had some really good basketball teams, and, and you, you're right. You have to enjoy those, and, and we try to talk to our kids about that and enjoy that, and the one thing that I notice is that, you know, when we have success like right now and our girls are having success right now is you get students in your school that maybe don't play sports that are becoming part of our student sections that travel to games and are big parts of that program. And, you know, they may not get the publicity and those sort of things, but our kids that play on our team and our coaches, and the girls' coaches and their kids, you know, we all we all understand what that means when you have, you know, when you're up warming up tonight at 7:30 for a championship game, and you look up and you have half your student body at the game. Um, that some of those kids may not know a lot about basketball, but they know what it's, the school spirit and and then that's what makes small school basketball so much fun, in my opinion. And um, you know, we've had that. Our student sections have been awesome in the last few years, and um, we have kids that are leading those student sections and. Um, it's just it's a really fun time. It really is, and it makes makes the school year go by fast, and it makes for a fun school year. Yeah, it, it sure does. You know, uh, witness that down in Hamilton County over the volleyball season. The the boys really got behind that volleyball team, and uh, one thing about it, it was they had uh, dedicated cheers. They had all kind of things, and like you said, they had four or five kids step up and was leading this group. And uh, I know that. Uh, even the community, there was people just started going to the volleyball games to watch the student section because they were having so much fun and so much enjoyment, and it is a big part of the game. Yeah, for sure, and you know, and I and, and from a teaching perspective, you know, as a, as an educator, and and even from the from families and in, in, in the community, there's nothing better than to seeing all those kids in the gym on a Friday night doing those sort of things than what other what the alternatives could be. Um, for those kids, uh, we know that they're there. They're enjoying themselves. They're having fun, and they're they're right there in the school, and they're not doing things that are, that maybe could get them into trouble and those sort of things. So when you see those things, and you see a lot of your students in the gym on a Friday night or even on, during the week, um, it just it just makes things it makes everybody kind of relax and feel good about what's going on in your community and in your school. And and uh, there's no question that it, it's uh, it's very important to the success of the of the athletic teams to have the students in the school and the staff and those other people in the community involved um, and excited, it, uh, it really helps for sure. Well, John, I'm glad you touched upon that this morning because as a school board member and stuff, sometimes athletics get a bad rap. People think in tough times you're spending too much money there. But a lot of people do not realize the value of high school athletics. And even though these kids aren't participating maybe on the floor, they're still involved in what's going on, and like you said, they're not out doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, I, I just think that um, you know I, I I've been involved in athletics my whole life, and and um, I am a very firm believer in, and I will argue with a lot of people that there are times, and I'm not gonna, you know, there are times when you can learn so many things about 
life and about, about things that, that you're going to, you know, go forward and learn later in work and life and how to handle situations. You can learn those things in athletics sometimes that you can't learn in the classroom or in a book. And, you know, those things are important, obviously, too, for your education. And those are the number one priorities. But athletics can play a huge role in the success of kids after school when they can't play sports anymore. But they can draw on those experiences from high school athletics and from grade school athletics or whatever that that is. And um, I'm not so sure that, you know, in my lifetime, I've, I probably learned more on the court and around my athletic teams than I maybe did in, a, in, the, in the classroom for some of the things that I'm doing right now in, in my career. So um, it's very important, and it's, uh, I think that, um, you know, those things go hand in hand, athletics and in the classroom. If you're successful in those two, two areas, um, it's a great start for, your, for the rest of your career and your life. We're visiting with Coach John Krause, the Oakville Rockets. And uh, real quick, John, before we let you go, we know we talk a lot about uh, your All-Stater, Noah Frederick, but he's not the only weapon that you've got on that Rockets team. So let's uh, give you a chance to touch upon the other starters on your team real quick and the key guys that come off the bench for the Rockets. Yeah, we have a real deep team this year. Um, it's probably the deepest team that I've had in the, in the you know 20 years that I've been here. Uh, we've had um, some really good teams, but this is a deep team for us. Uh, we bring back two starters, Noah Frederick, and um, Shane Gantz, there are two. They were our two leading scorers from last year. Um, there are two starters that are back. The rest of our kids are kids that play maybe a few spots here and there, some varsity time. But I wouldn't really consider it a, you know, varsity experience overall. They just they were a lot of JV minutes for those kids. We graduated four seniors that played a ton of minutes for us last year on the varsity. So we are fairly young in ex- in an experience standpoint on the varsity level, but. Um, some of our other seniors that will play a lot of minutes for us are Drew Frederick, Logan Reekman, um, Kirkland Meyer. Uh, those guys will come in, you know, off the bench and, pl- and play some minutes for us. Some will start. You know, Kirkland Meyer started a game already. Drew Frederick started a game. Logan Reekman's going to start some games. Um, those guys come in and give us substantial minutes. Um, you know, we have a junior, Noah, uh, Caleb Frederick. Uh, his brothers know, obviously, but um, Caleb is uh, starting for us at times right now. Um, we have some other juniors, Luke Hensler, Peyton Harry. You know, a lot of those guys are are um, JV guys from last year that had a very successful JV season, and so they're getting you know they're getting a lot of minutes, um, you know, off the bench and those sort of things. Josh Madrid is another senior that that started for us at point guard, and so um, you know we just have a deep bench. You know, we can play ten guys on a lot of nights if we need to, um, and that's unusual for a school our size to have the ability to do that. And, um, you know, those kids are, are fighting for minutes. They're fighting for spots. And it always makes practices great. And it, it just makes our kids better. I know sometimes for their, from their standpoint, it doesn't seem that way because they may not be getting the, the start or they may not get so many minutes. But um, in the long run, when things, you know, hopefully pan out the way you hope they do later on, um, they'll understand and they'll, they'll, they'll see the rewards of being competitive every day in practice. Well, John, we always enjoy visiting with you on the sports couch. We appreciate your time this morning, and best of luck tonight as you prepare for that championship game against Pinckneyville. It ought to be a good one over there at Carlisle, and we encourage people to get there early if they if they want to get a seat for that one. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a great crowd, and it'll be a great atmosphere. And um, you know, hopefully, uh, their kids rise to the occasion, and our kids do too. And it's a great high school basketball game. So, yeah. yeah, as long as it's a good game, and, it's, and everything goes well, um, and, and you learn things about your team. Um, and um, yeah, that's what you're hoping for as a coach early in the season. All right. Well, best of luck tonight. Again, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you throughout the season, all right? All right. Thanks, Appreciate it, John. All right. Hmm. Okay. Bye-bye. It's head coach John Krause, the Oakville Rockets, and that ought to be a dandy over there tonight. That'll be uh, quite a festive atmosphere mm-hmm. there. You know, when those two schools get together, uh, what great basketball tra- tradition at both those facilities, Randy, mm-hmm. and it'll be a lively crowd tonight with the – championship on the line and one thing we didn't touch upon with uh, coach kraus because uh, we ran out of time there is something he's got this year that he hasn't had so much in the past he's actually got some size this year too he's got a couple guys that you know go six four six five six six that that uh, he hasn't had that luxury in the in the past of having that much size so uh you heard him talk about how deep his team is this year one of the deepest teams he's ever had so uh that rockets team is going to be a load this year in 1a basketball uh you look for him to make a deep run mm-hmm, definitely so all right, well, when we come back, we're going to talk to another 1A coach, and that's the uh, head coach of the Cesar Lear Red Devils, and that's Shane Garner. We're going to find out about Cesar's program 
Coming up next on the Sports Couch, stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net. This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Blueford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. And now on Translator, W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio Foundation. The best Christian music, 90.9. Compassion International and Museum of the Bible present Casting Crowns, the Very Next Thing Tour. With special guest Danny Gokey. And unspoken. Join Casting Crowns for the Very Next Thing Tour, performing songs from their latest album, The Very Next Thing, as well as all your favorite Casting Crowns hits. Casting Crowns, The Very Next Thing Tour, with Danny Goki and Unspoken. It's an evening you won't want to miss. The Very Next Thing Tour with Casting Crowns, Danny Goki and Unspoken, coming to the SIU Arena in Carbondale on Good Friday, April 14th. Tickets go on sale beginning December 7th through our website at wbyn.org. Welcome back to the web, to the Sports Couch here on uh, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wbyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. Let's talk about the Sessavalier Red Devils right now. Joining us on the phone is head coach Shane Garner. Good morning, coach. How are you? Very good. Good morning to you guys, too. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Good to have you on the show this morning. And uh, your uh, Red Devils team has uh, already got off to uh, – I start here playing a few basketball games under your belt, and then uh, you're going to be getting back into action here again real soon. Let's talk about your start so far. Uh, yeah, we had a you know pretty decent start on Monday night against Lovejoy over at DuCoin. Uh, was able to you know get a win there and kind of get off on the right foot. Uh, lost a tough one last night in a uh, very back and forth game against Cairo. Uh, lost by two points. Came down to the end, you know, just one possession, and so. Uh, you know, there's some things, uh, some consistency things that we need to work on and, and, and continue to grow in and get better at that uh, I think will help us down the line. But, you know, we're off on the right foot. We just got to keep moving forward. And, uh, you know, we got <laughs> quick turnaround today with two opportunities here at noon and then again at 730 tonight. So uh, no rest, just going to keep on moving. Yeah, that is a quick turnaround. And, and talk about how you prepare for that uh, both mentally and physically, Coach. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's really hard at the beginning of the year. You know, usually we have that turnaround at the BIT in January where you kind of got all your stuff in, but we're still uh, very early in the season where there's some things, you know, we really need to work on, uh, you know, to get better. But, you know, we're just going to keep moving today, have a quick walkthrough here before we go. And, uh, you know, we just try to do what we do and do it really well and uh, uh, and not necessarily a, you know, a scouting scheme style of thing, but more of just a us and let's just play our game and play the best that we can and let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about uh, some of your returning t- uh, players this year. You got a couple starters returning from last year's squad, so let's give you a chance to run through your starters and then some of those key guys that come off the bench for Cesar Valier this year. Yes, we got uh, quite a few guys back from last year since we were very young. Um, you know, we got and seniors Charles Farmer and Jamie Lance and Aston Baxter. Uh, those guys all started uh, last year off and on some and contributed some major minutes and starting this year for us. Um, juniors who started quite a bit last year, and Lucas Gunner and Preston Lawless. Um, we also have some other juniors who are coming off the bench and giving us some good minutes. Joshua Gunter, uh, Clayton Smith, Addison Page. Um, so we've got a good mix of a, a junior and senior group, and we also got two sophomores who are playing quite a bit, and, uh, and Tyler Winchester and Seth Bowles. And, and Tyler actually started last night for us and had a great game and uh, hit a big three at the end. 
uh, to get the game real close and make it a one possession game. So, you know, we've got some youth, but we've also got some experience because the guys had to play last year when they were young. So, um, you know, it should be an exciting year once we kind of get in the flow. Yeah, you know, uh, you're going through the same thing that I think Mount Vernon's are going through right now, too. Uh, having a lot of young guys that they're playing this year, sophomores and things like that. And you saw a lot of that last year. And so, you know, the guys took their lumps a little bit last year, but uh, learned a lot from it, grew a lot from it. And now that experience hopefully will pay dividends for you this year. Absolutely. You know, we've uh, you know been in a roller coaster in the past kind of three years. We've been kind of on the mountaintop and kind of in the valley last year. But, you know, if, if we don't learn anything from last year, then we've completely failed uh, at what we've done uh, but there are a lot of lessons that we learned. Kids have grown from that. They've learned from that. And, uh, you know, we're, our focus right now is trying to be disciplined through that and not reverting back to default, which is kind of what we were in last year. And mm-hmm. so we keep, uh, we're going to keep pushing through that and, uh, you know, and just kind of see what happens. Well, your opponent today at 1230, they're at the tournament at DuCoin. The tip-off classic will be the Carmi Bulldogs. You had a chance probably to see them play a couple times in the tournament as they got wins over DuCoin and over Lovejoy. Uh, what's the key to the game today against Carmi? Uh, we're gonna have to match their intensity, and they're they're a, they're a physical team. They're a disciplined team. Um, they're doing a great job over there. Uh, you know, in coach's second year being there, and uh, they've uh, they've got some size, and they shoot the ball very well from the perimeter. So we're gonna have to match their intensity and get out and guard them a little bit, and try to force some things uh, <clears throat> that they don't want to necessarily do. And then on the other end, we're just gonna have to work the ball and try to get through. They're gonna be physical with us, and so we're gonna have to try to get them to move and get them out, and uh, you know, see if we can kind of get in the lane a little bit and kind of decrease their size with our speed mm-hmm. and then you face the decoin indians later on tonight at 7 30 the host school and what do you look for in that game absolutely they're uh you know they're a big physical school obviously with their football background uh, the kids are strong uh they're fast and they play a, they play kind of an up-tempo game so that'll kind of be fun for us we kind of want to get up and down a little bit we've got the athletes and the numbers to do that and so if we can uh stay disciplined and, and and make them run an offensive half court set and you know in the offensive end and then we can push it uh, in our transition game, I think we'll have a, a good opportunity there, but we're going to have to step up. And it, it, it's going to be things that sound easy when you talk about it, but they're very difficult to do consistently throughout the game. So we'll have to uh, toughen up a little bit and see if we can consistently do that. Mm-hmm. Danny and I were talking about the Black Diamond Conference, and Danny Cesar Valier is in the uh, west division of that Black Diamond with Goreville, Chester, Christopher, Vienna, Trico, and Ziegler Royalton. So it'll be a competitive side of the conference, won't it? You know, uh, when, when you look at the Black Diamond all over, Randy, but – when you look at that west side, you see a lot of teams right there that could really be pretty competitive. It should be a knockdown drag out about every night, won't it be, Shane? Yes, it will. You know, that's usually how it is. It's, you know, in the conference race, you know, you want to make sure you win all your games at home and hopefully you can still win on the road. Um, you know, Goreville's returning a lot. Trico's going to be solid against Chester's returning a lot. Um, you know, we got Viana bumping over to our side, so that's a new opponent that we're mm-hmm. not exactly familiar with. Well, um, just PR let me give you just let me give you a little scouting report on them. We've experienced that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you. Be be prepared for that hack a shack attack. I, I'm telling you, they just come at you in waves. They're going to beat you. They're going to bang you, and they're, they they don't care to put you at the free throw line because they don't think you can make them when you get there. Well, good. We were nine for nine last night, so hopefully we can continue that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they are very aggressive uh, up up-tempo style team and uh, he's usually got about eight kids down there and he just comes at you in waves and they've got a lot of fouls and they use them <laughs> well i guess you're still pretty active in the uh, fellowship of christian athletes down there at, at sessa valeria you got a good chapter of fca at the school right yes we got a great chapter we meet on wednesday mornings in my classroom uh you know got some new uh new help this year you know eric drake is still here uh, helping out, and you know, we got Scott Tickner, who's came down mm-hmm. from Mount Vernon. He's oh, helping yeah. out a little bit. He's he has been a, fan, a phenomenal, you know, add into our program, and has just fit right in, and and really been a, uh, you know, kind of that sage person in our group, who's you know, who's been through a lot. He's seen a lot, and so he's able to kind of to help us out and mentor us uh, young guys as we're going through. And so it's a it's a great thing to be a part of. We got a lot of kids who are involved, and uh, you know, it's just a special thing we got. Yeah, that's great because uh, there's so much more to it than, than just the athletics. There's so much more that uh, you're able to teach these young men about life uh, while doing the athletics, but the FCA is a big part of that, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, that, that's one thing that we're trying to teach this year is, you know, you know life's not always easy. Um, no matter who you are or what you're doing, it, it can change in a second. And, uh, you know, if our faith's not bounded in Jesus Christ and that foundation, then, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen. But if we hold, 
hold on to the truth of Christ and, and the truth that will set us free. You know, those things are just circumstances, and they don't define who we are, and we can move forth, uh, you know, with Christ as our rock and Christ as our path and Christ as our leader. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the things of this world really don't matter. Absolutely. Well, we were looking at your schedule, and uh, after the tournament here at DuCoin, uh, your schedule gets easier because you travel to Oakville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing like going to play the Rockets on a Tuesday night in Oakville. Oh, my goodness uh, sakes. And, boy, they are, they're Krause, loaded this year, too, aren't they? Yeah. Coach Krause does a phenomenal job, and uh, you yeah. know, it's really so disciplined, so tough. But it, it's a great game for us and a great environment to go play in. Yeah, make sure you guard Noah Frederking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who, who's that? I haven't heard of him. <laughs> Uh, and there's another one coming, another Frederick King coming too. Yeah, so uh, they just keep they just keep reloading. Them, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, that ought to be a quite a battle uh, between them and Pinckneyville tonight over at the uh, championship at the Carlisle tournament. Absolutely, that'll be a fun fundamental basketball. Yeah, game. yeah, I think it will be. Uh, and then later on, uh, right after Christmas, you have your your annual Cesar Holiday Tournament. I know you're looking forward to that as well. Absolutely, that's a fun time, especially for our community and school, and have all the the different teams come into our town and uh, and be able to host them and and just be courteous and show them kind of how we do things here at Cesar Valier. And it's a great time for our kids to be able to play in their own gym. Huge crowds and different, you know, get to play some different teams and, and see some different styles of basketball. It's just a, it, it, it's a whirlwind of four days, but it's a very fun four days. Well, and the thing that's unique about your tournament, uh, so many tournaments have gone to the pool play uh, style uh, of action, and you've been able to, to maintain that, that 16-team bracketed tournament now for many, many years. And, and so that's one thing that, that sets your tournament apart, makes it still kind of unique, particularly for uh, small schools. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, we, we take very much pride in our tournament, and we, we think it's one of the better 1A tournaments, you know, in the state of Illinois. Um, we love the bracket, you know, the old school bracket. You know, you got to play every night, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, you got to win to move on, just like, you know, in the state tournament and all that stuff. So um, it is neat. It, it's neat. I mean, it's it's been a tough road a couple of years for Coach Basso to, to keep filling the 16 teams, but he keeps working hard and keeps getting it done. So, uh, you know, these kids can, can play in a great tournament. And as Danny would say, there's no slouch there in your hospitality room either. It's uh, it's one of the better ones. <laughs> <laughs> We do take pride in our hospitality room, and, and you know that's that's one thing we do here at Cesar Valier. And, and obviously, I'm biased because this is where I'm from and that's yep. raised. But uh, we we do want to reach out and we want to make people feel at home when they're here. Yeah, well, you certainly do. And uh, hey, we appreciate having you on the show this morning, Shane. And, and best of luck uh, to to your ball club as you play those two games today at the DuCoin Tip Off Classic. And I'm sure we'll uh, talk to you during the season. Okay. All right. Thank you guys very much. Have a great. All day. All right. You too. Okay. Bye bye. As Shane Garner, the head coach of the Cesar Valier Red Devils, and they're off to a one-on-one start, Danny. They get their hands full today. This will take on uh, Carmi at 12:30, and then turn around and play DuCoin at 7:30 today at that uh, DuCoin Tip-Off Classic. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of action today for Cesar Valier. Oh yeah, you know uh, these preseason kind of tournament deals. Uh, I heard Ron Ron Weinmiller from uh, Benton talking this morning, and he said, "You know, it's it's quite a challenge." His team played the late game last night. That mm-hmm. middle game run about forty five minutes over. They got off the bus at Benton at twelve thirty last night, and they play at two this afternoon and at eight again tonight. So he said, "You know, you talk about testing teams early on. That's kind of a test." And with Cesar, they played last night, and they'll turn around and they'll have two quick ones again today. So test these young young folks at an early part of the season well not only that you got a 1a team that's taking on a couple 2a teams yeah today, you, you know? know you got uh Carmi and you've got uh Ducoin both over there 2a so mm-hmm. that'd be a challenge yeah all right stay tuned when we come back uh we're gonna shift gears here a little bit talk a little uh girls basketball with clint weinmiller from the hamilton county lady foxes that's coming up next on the sports couch we'll be right back it's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net.
Carrollton County Flooring on the south side of the square in McLeansboro offers a full line of flooring, cabinets, and countertops for your home or business. Countertops or showers are available in granite, quartz, corian, custom marble, or ceramic tile. Their showroom includes a complete line of flooring available in ceramic tile, cork, bamboo, hardwood, vinyl, laminate, and carpeting, including name brands such as Armstrong, Bruce, Marazzi, Mulligan, Shaw, and Tarquet. We thank Hamilton County Flooring in McLeansboro for their support. Underwriting on the Vine is made possible by Fairfield Printing and Graphics. They specialize in screen printing of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies with your favorite team name and colors. They also do printing of envelopes, stationery, posters, and business cards, and they also make outdoor banners in a variety of sizes and colors. Fairfield Printing and Graphics is located at number 5 Williamson Drive in Fairfield. Their phone number is 842-4048. Prominent Technologies in McLeansboro is an underwriting supporter of the Vine. Chad May and Prominent Technology specialize in computer and laptop repair, IT system upgrades, virus protection software, digital security camera installation, and on-location consulting. Prominent Technologies are computer problem solvers, and they have a long list of satisfied customers. Their phone number is 643-7114, and they are located just north of the square in McLean. <laughs> And welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming at areasports.net, live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselman. It's time to shift gears here a little bit. Going to talk some girls' high school hoops right now with Coach Clint Weinmiller from Hamilton County Lady Foxes. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. Yeah, and your uh, Lady Foxes are doing well so far. You've been off to a pretty good start. Let's talk about the start of the season for you. We, we have gotten off to a good start. Uh, we've been successful five out of seven times, but uh, as a basketball coach, the only ones I can remember are the two that they got us, and what could I have done different for us to be successful on those two? So, But we're off to a tremendous start. Coach, your team this week defeated uh, – Carmine on Tuesday night, 39 to 28, and then you come back Thursday night and you get another Black Diamond victory, uh, 35 25. And what's also special about that is you get one on the road. Uh, I know in that Black Diamond conference, you feel like you got to win all your home games and you got to steal one or two on the road to have a chance to walk away at that championship, don't you? Well, we feel that we you have to take care of business at home, and we need to get us at least three. At, on the road, and this past week we were fortunate enough to get one at home against Carmi. Uh, did a g- tremendous job defensively against them. When you hold the team, a varsity team, for 10 minutes without scoring, and a kid uh, with the caliber of Abby Vaughn, who scored 42 points on Thursday night, and we, we held her to 13, and the team to 28 points. you got to feel pretty good about your chances. And then we went to Johnson City, which is presents us a lot of problems. We're not overly blessed with a lot of size, but we have kids that will that understand that we have to help on the post. And they have a girl by the name last name of Price, who's about six foot or so tall. We held her in check to about four or five points. Uh, did a tremendous job. Got a lot of we. Our transition right now is uh, just uh, very good from defense to offense. We got a lot of easy baskets in the second quarter. We had a terrible third quarter, which seems to be the something that's kind of carried on for the last two games our third quarters i think we've scored a total of three points but the other team has only scored seven so we're we're hanging around in the fourth quarter we had sydney williams hit two huge threes for us at johnson city which got us back up to nine and then we held, hit our free throws down the stretch to get them by 10 held them to 25 points uh so just a tremendous job on defense on both both games this week but you know we have a tough task on monday with benton coming in here they present us with a lot of problems trying to match up with them so it's a home game which means everything to us so but we got to be ready to get them well coach you know i've got to see your team play now six out of seven games and uh i've been impressed with the overall all-around ball handling you have with this group of kids uh Whoever gets the rebound, they may just take it and take off down the floor trying to lead the fast break. Uh, also with that uh, run and jump defense, uh, your girls seem to be getting that down very well right now. Well, we, we've 
worked there. We worked very hard on fundamental. We have a couple kids that go over to Evansville that work on a lot of ball handling stuff. We, you know, anywhere else probably most of our players are guards, but here some of them have to be in the post. So we have a lot of guards oriented that can get the rebound and push it up the floor. I think that's our best strength is that we have some speed and some quickness. And the run and jump, we, we've got a couple of our guards, I think, have got it. You know, they've kind of figured that out. But we've got to get our back people to rotate to that next pass. We've done it a few times, but not probably consistently like we would like for them. But, you know, we're just seven games into the season, but... We would like for them to pick that up just a little bit quicker because I think they could get a lot more easy baskets if we could ever get that down to rotate a little faster. Well, Coach, uh, you know, uh, as you were saying there, you know, this is a learning experience for those kids because it's something I've not seen you do with a group of kids in the past, but it looks like you're playing to your strengths. Uh, uh, Half-court inside, pounded inside game is not your strength this year. Like you said, you're not blessed with a lot of size in under the goal, but uh, – pressing and uh, putting a lot of pressure on defensive wise and putting pressure on on the offensive end by getting up the floor a lot of times I'll look up and there'll be three foxes down the floor and the other team has one kid maybe back but the rest of their team's not even to the half line so that's definitely a strength for you Uh, yes indeed Uh, I was telling people my wife at home, especially, you know, that just to watch these kids in practice, just get the ball up the floor. I watched them one day, the ball hit the floor one time, and every kid touched the ball and we shot a layup. And I thought, oh, we're, we're, we're blessed with that. Yeah. Uh, we, and so we, we have to do that to get easy baskets because we're probably going to struggle in slow down games, uh, just because of our size and not maybe really, uh, someone dominant in the middle i mean emily blades does a tremendous job for her size she plays a lot bigger than what she really is she gets a lot of help from the guards and we would rather give up a contested three-point shot than to have them just pounded inside and shoot layups and we've seen a lot of problems you know we've played a lot of teams with a lot of big players uh wayne city had a good size the bass girl uh, Lawrenceville, Pinckneyville, every team we've played, we've been a little overmatched, but we've been able to compete because of our help defense and then getting some runouts. Now, we've not always made our little two-foot shots on some of these getting up down the floor, which has probably hurt us in a couple games. But for the most part, I like how we're, we're playing. We compete every night with, you know, heart and guts and a lot of help and do, do the little things right and you'll have a chance. Uh, Coach, one girl that's really stood out in my mind here throughout the first six games that I saw you play is your daughter, Adrian. I think she has really picked up her game of basketball. She was always a great defender, but uh, looking to score. I noticed the other night in that car in my game, she made a couple big steals, and last year at that time, she would have circled the wagon or been looking for somebody to get rid of the basketball, and when she got the ball... She had one goal in mind, and that was to go down and get a layup, and she did both times. <laughs> yes. Uh, she has really stepped up this year. You know, not always easy to play for your dad. I think uh, it'd be a terrible that. person to play for. <laughs> Ask my uh, daughters. I think they'll tell you the same thing. She, uh, you know, we threw her out there as a sophomore because of what you said about playing, being able to play defense. And she didn't have to do a whole lot when you had uh, – Karen, Dana, and Bria, and Megan, you didn't, you know, you could just go do what you did well, which was to guard. Last year was different. You know, you, we lost a lot of kids. And now all of a sudden you got to find somebody to step up. Uh, we And we struggled because I don't know if we ever had anybody to step up. This year, your senior year, you know, this, this is your last go around. And we have three seniors that'll, that put the team first. And, and, and it's carried over so far. Uh, well, I'm going to let you put your athletic director's hat on a little bit also here this morning. Uh, talk a little bit about how important it was for the success that the fall sports teams had. And uh, some of those things, don't you think your team's kind of feeding off of some of that volleyball success also? Well, the biggest cheerleader besides our kids was myself because we want those groups to be successful, to find ways to win. Uh, to compete night in and night out and, and to be, you know, win a regional and to get that 
to ride in on a fire truck. We, we want stuff like that because we hope that it carries over to basketball. And, and so far, uh, we ha- it, it has carried over because we play with a lot of confidence. Catherine Drone has a lot of confidence right now. Anna Miller has a lot of confidence. Adrian has a lot of confidence. Emily Blades and Kaylee. And now most of those kids, four or five of those, were big contributors on the volleyball team. So, yes, we, we want them to be extremely successful in other sports. So it will carry over when they get to the sport that I coach. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm like you, Coach. I, I just think that uh, when those girls walk into the gym right now from the success they had in volleyball, they just feel that they should they should win when they walk on the floor, and I've not always seen that at Hamilton County here in the last few years. No, we we have a we have a great group of kids right now, uh, both both sides that have worked hard, uh, that we would like to be to see successful, and have been successful, and uh, it it has been a it's been great to watch. You know, it's just it's been. We, our crowds at our girls' basketball game, I think, have fed over from the, the fact of the volleyball game, and it's just a great thing to see right now. Well, the boys got a big win last night down there at Goreville, and hopefully they can pick up another one or two down there today. And uh, your Lady Foxes team's off to a great start here on this season and look forward to keeping that ball rolling. Well, we appreciate that. We hope we can. I hope The boys, you know, three games in 24 hours is not easy, especially when you start your season. We went through that a week ago, and we only won one of those out of the three. So we hope the boys got them a little momentum. That was a big win for them because, you know, in the past, we'd have probably caved in when we got down three with four or five minutes to go in the game, and we found a way to win. Oakley stepped up huge, knocked down some free throws. Terry Diedrich played well. Ethan played well until he got in foul trouble. Uh, that, that was a great win for them. Big rebound by Whipple in the last 40 seconds when, after we missed the free throw, and he got a stick back for a three-point play. It was just, uh, you know, we had to have things go right, and we need to catch a break, and last night we did. Hopefully that carries over for us today. we got two tough opponents in Anna and then a conference rival in Johnson City who brings a lot of people back, but hopefully the momentum will shift over and stay with the old Foxes. We hope so. We want to wish you the uh, best of luck and look forward to seeing your team down there on Monday night. We'll be there to cover you live once again on Monday night. For anyone that okay. can't get out there on foxesfans.net, uh, look forward to seeing a good run by this Lady Foxes team. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your coverage. I like going back. Uh, we can now watch the films. Of course, so can everybody else in southern Illinois and wherever But uh, to scout. But I, I really like it. I went home and watched several games. I watched when Dotson tweaked her ankle a little bit a few nights ago and it's just easy now for me to kind of watch opponents and see what we need to work on so i appreciate what you do well i appreciate what you do for me too clint and uh it's always enjoyable to work through you throughout the season and uh best of luck down there and let's keep them foxes rolling all right thanks thanks clint appreciate it have yourself a good weekend all right all right okay take care Uh bye-bye that's Clint Weinmiller, athletic director and head coach of the Hamilton County Lady Foxes. Off to a good start this season. Got another one Monday night. And uh, if you can't make it to the game, you can watch it live on foxesfans.net. Right, Danny? Yep, that'd be a big challenge over there. The uh, Benton Rangerettes come in, but they lost a uh, big part of their team. Uh, Ma- mm-hmm. uh, Abney. Michaela, I think it's the first name, uh, out for the season with a mm. bad knee injury. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to talk to a former Hamilton County player, uh, Doug Miller, who, of course, is the coach now at Gallatin County. As they're off to a pretty good start this season, we'll talk about his Gallatin County Hawks coming up next as the Sports Couch continues right here. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, The Vine, and Areasports.net.
Pro-Life Radio Foundation is blessed by the generosity of Monroe Accounting in McLeansboro. They specialize in a full line of accounting services for businesses, individuals, and farms, including tax preparation, payroll preparation, quarterly sales taxes, and more. Their office is located at 102 East Market Street in downtown McLeansboro with experience and knowledge to serve your needs. Their phone number is 643-3993. Monroe Accounting in McLeansboro, a proud supporter of 90.9 and 105.5 The Vine. Fairfield Memorial Hospital Urgent Care now provides convenient treatment for minor illnesses and conditions on a walk-in basis seven days a week in the Medical Arts Complex, Suite E. This is Physician Assistant James Hopper, and on behalf of the Urgent Care team, we are here for you when your family needs urgent medical attention. Urgent Care will allow you a more affordable and efficient alternative to an emergency room visit. We are open Monday through Friday, 8 until 8, and Saturday and Sunday, 8 until 5, in the Fairfield Memorial Hospital Medical Arts Complex, Suite E. Crawford Plumbing LLC in Woodlawn is licensed, bonded, insured, and ready to serve your household and business plumbing needs. From leaky faucets to complete plumbing systems and repair, Crawford Plumbing in Woodlawn is a full-service plumbing company. They can be reached at 618-242-3360. Crawford Plumbing in Woodlawn is a proud underwriting sponsor of Real Life Radio. Welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and streaming live worldwide on both of our websites. Live video streaming at areasports.net and live audio streaming at wvyn.org. I'm Randy Olson live in studio along with Danny Anselman. Well, last night they had a wild game between the El Dorado Eagles and the Gallatin County Hawks. Went down to the wire literally uh, in overtime. El Dorado wins it over Gallatin County, and joining us right now is the head coach of the Hawks. That's that's uh, Doug Miller. Doug, how are you this morning? Doing great. How are you guys? Great. Good to have you on the show. Uh, wild game last night with El Laredo. Tell us about it. It was a tale of uh, lots of tales. We, uh, <laughs> it was, we slowed it down the first, and, and I think the first quarter score was 5-2. to two. Wow. And then they went on an 18-2 run, and we're down 13 points at halftime. We come up and changed our game plan. And we were ahead by four with under two minutes left in the game. Went to overtime, and we got beat by three. Yeah, 47-44 was the final. That's a, that's a wild one last night. And uh, let's back up a little bit and go to the, uh, the Grayville tournament because you had some success down there. You went 2-1 and one in that tournament. Your only loss being to the, the champion of the tournament, Edwards County. But you had to be happy with the way your team played in that tournament, I assume, right? We did. Uh, we started out with Grayville and beat them by five. And then we had a good Edwards County team. They're going to be a good addition to the Black Diamond. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're 6'6", 6'5", 6'3", 6'3", 6'3", so they can play with anybody in the Black Diamond. And they, they beat us pretty good over there. And then we come back and played Sistany and beat them by 30. Mm-hmm. So it's a good experience for our kids. Yeah, so you've got to be happy with the way things are, are shaping up for you so far. And, and, and according to your schedule, I guess you've got a game tonight against Galatia. Is that right? We do. We play Galatia tonight at 6 at home. Okay, and, and there's not a whole lot of Saturday games tonight. That's one of the few other than the tournaments that are going on. So a uh, regular season game at home against uh, Galatia. So this is really your home opener tonight then. It is, and you should have a good crowd. And, and our kids had to bounce back from a tough game last night and do bitty ball, which is first grade through fourth grade right now. <laughs> and we got practice after this interview and then come back tonight and play. So <laughs> give our kids a lot, a lot of credit. I yeah. could be buying free park donuts this morning, so they should be happy. <laughs> All right. Well, your opponent tonight, Galatia, uh, hey, they got a win last night over Carrier Mills, 54-44. So tell us what you know about Galatia and what's going to be the key tonight against them. Uh, they shoot lots of three-pointers. They're a fast-break team at press. Uh, they have, like, four starters back from last year's team. So we got to defend the three and control their pressure. Well, your your team also likes to play a little kind of fast tempo, don't you, Doug? Well, normally we, we run and gun and press. But last night we were outside. I was 6'6", 6'5", 6'5", 6'3", 6'3", 5'10". And we're 5'10 across the board, except for Audie Goble. He's six foot and a half. So <laughs> we wanted to slow the ball down and make them play our, our type of game for the first half. And then it worked for a, a quarter. And then they, they went to a one two two half court trap and he had some trouble with it. But give our guys credit, they were down thirteen at halftime and come back and press the socks off El Dorado. And like I said, we up by four in the fourth quarter, had a chance to win and just, you know, 
it didn't go our way. Mm-hmm. But Seth Ramsey's five foot ten, and he guarded Parsons, who was six five, an athletic, a high flying dunker. Mm-hmm. He scored four points against the five ten guy playing man to man defense. Wow. Well, you mentioned Seth Ramsey. Uh, he's a heck of a player, and he's been a great player for you all his career there uh, at Gallatin County. And, and, of course, he's eclipsing all kinds of scoring records, I think, uh, before he's done. But uh, having him back is really kind of the, the, the nucleus of your ball club, right? It's great. And he's mentoring these kids. And, I mean, he's making Audie Goble, Robbie Prince, Aaron Walters, Trevor Duvall, Brian Wardle, Hunter Walters, Dawson Hiss, Lucas Reeder, Jet Rushing, making all of them kids – Hard nosed players, and they're molding themselves in the hands. He plays every position hard, every drill hard, and you look around, and we got guys, England taking him. I can't tell you who's playing hard. Is it Seth or somebody else that's playing so hard all the time? Well, you know, Doug, that is a very important factor in a team is to have some great leadership, and uh, how great it is to have Seth, Le- uh, Seth Ramsey leading that group as a senior. You know, he's been through the battles down there, and you've got a lot of young kids there that are gaining some great experience from him. Oh, I agree, Danny. Absolutely. And uh, we're seeing sophomores that started for us last year that are maturing by the minute. And I give Seth a lot of credit for that. I mean, he's so good at talking to them, you know, in practice. Got to go harder, guys. At halftime, we're down 13 last night at halftime. I give my big sermon, you know, halftime sermon. <laughs> and then they all bunched up and Seth goes, boys, we don't quit till it's over. So you see us down by 13 and you snap your fingers five times and we're hit by four. Yeah. And that's a lot of heart and effort and guts by my guys. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And uh, uh, it, it has to make you very proud as a coach to seeing this young man come through your system and have the success that he has. But not only that on the court, but to be a great person, uh, you just know when he leaves your school, he's going to become a great leader in the community down there. Oh, absolutely. He's got several D3 schools looking at him, so he's not done playing basketball yet. Good. Oh, no. No, I'm. there's always somebody that can use a kid that can score 43 points for you. <laughs> and I keep telling you, these college coaches, you can't tell the intangibles on the floor. What right. he does for your program, you know, on and off the floor, it is unbelievable. And uh, there's not one thug on my team. I've got 21 kids, and they are some of the best kids in the world. I mean, I've coached teams that have won 20 games before and not liked them. Right. Well, I like these guys. Mm-hmm. They are just good kids. And we go to U of E team camp, and we go bowling. We putt putt golf. We go to the show. And our coaching staff always beats our kids in bowling, by the way. Oh, 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 that definitely sounds like a challenge. It does. I think the gauntlet's been dropped. Yeah. And our kids are listening in the gym and on 90.9 of the vine app, so they're hearing this interview. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> well, let's stir the pot a little more, Danny. Yeah, uh, let's throw him to the wolves. He's doing a pretty good job of taking care of that himself right now, uh, Randy. We're not having to even lead him. Yeah. Well, Doug, talk about uh, some of the big upcoming games you got. I know uh, – one of the things you have to really look forward to, and I know they do at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament, they look forward to the Gallatin County Hawks coming in there because when they come, it's that sea of orange. We always have a great fan base. Last night, we got a fantastic crowd. I mean, we looked up there, and, and Seth Ramsey made a great move to the basket, and I thought it was a block in a basket. The referees, you know, they called it a charge, so we got to accept that. But I can't imagine crowd, you would have disagreed. No, never. Our crowd did the wave, I think. You saw the orange wave going on. After uh, that call. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, the Hawks, the following you have down there at Gallatin County. And that just goes to show how important high school athletics is in a community. Right there, Doug. Oh, I agree with you 100%. Uh, sometimes it gets lost in the fact, and people think you overpay for sports and stuff. But there's a lot of life lessons taught right there on that basketball court. Oh, if you can play for Coach Herman, Coach Hardwick, Coach Waller, Coach Drone, and myself, you can go get a job and take this type of criticism, and you can excel at a job in, in five years from now. Well, Coach, we appreciate you talking here this morning. But before you get out of here, I want to congratulate you and your wife. Uh, I see where you're expecting uh, your third child, and congratulations on that. Well, thanks a lot. I have to coach and teach them about 89 now. <laughs> and i got to say, my wife is great. Our, our coaching staff, we scouted six games last Saturday after a three-hour practice, and she accepts that, and she's a very supporting wife on, on that aspect. So i got to give her credit for that. Yeah, all right. Hey, one more she question. Listening to you. 
Good, good. All right. Well, one more question before we let you go. Uh, do you feel like you got the target on your back this year in the Greater Egyptian Conference? Because there's a lot of people that really are, are, are picking your Hawks to win the conference this year, uh, just uh, ahead of Crab Orchard. So how do you feel about that? Well, Jack Broad and Steve Dunford both picked us at the top of the conference. But this conference has so much parity this year that anybody can beat anybody on any given night. Mm-hmm. Galatia beat Carrier Mills, who is a, a very good ball club. We right. Galatia tonight. If they right. shoot well... We're in trouble. Mm-hmm. You got Crab Orchard, who is very powerful three point shooter. And you got NCO, who plays the Gauntlet style. They, they shoot 103 the game and press you. <laughs> Thompsonville's very good this year. Uh, uh, I Harvey saw, that, I saw that game last night between Thompsonville and North City. And uh, Thompsonville's got some young kids that can kind of play, and they've got some good senior leadership on that group. Uh, they do. And they're 6'7, six, 6'5, six, and 6'4. Six, they, uh, they got a young guard uh, that's a sophomore. I Kessler. thought played a very great game last night, and I've seen him above the rim two or three times. Kessler's a very nice little point guard, and he's only a sophomore. Yeah. yeah. All right, Doug. Well, it's going to be fun uh, following your Hawks this year, and so we appreciate your time on the couch this morning, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk throughout the season. All right? Well, thanks a lot, and you guys do a great job. All right, thanks. Have a good weekend. We'll yeah. see you down yeah. there at the El Dorado Tournament. Thanks a lot. You bet. All righty. Bye-bye. Doug Miller, head coach of the Gallatin County Hawks, and uh, yeah, they're going to turn around and play again tonight. That should be an interesting game tonight against Galatia. Well, Galatia's going to come in there with uh, a lot of uh, up tempo stuff. Mm-hmm. They got a big win last night. They got to be feeling good about theirself. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I'm telling you, that Gallatin County Hawks team, he's loaded. Well, I think having that game last night on the schedule against El Dorado is going to benefit them more than uh, than than we know because uh, despite the fact they lost last night, you know, in overtime, forty seven, forty four, whatever, um, you know, playing a bigger school like that and playing that kind kind of competition, that's only going to make you better. Well, the size, yeah, the size, the size, uh, being able to compete against that size yeah. factor, and uh, I'm sure Doug learned some things about his team last night that he can tweak and implement now Mm -hmm. you know he tried to slow it down it worked good then Mm -hmm. they they changed up so Mm -hmm. then he went back to his pressing style yeah and uh just the fight and effort his kids put forth down there in that game from the way it sounds well they're 510 all the way across the board and and you're you're guarding guys six four six five i mean that's that's tough but uh, they hung hung right there with them last night so it was a heck of a game all right when we come back we're going to talk to andy fahrenbacher head coach of the salem wildcats they played last night. We'll tell you how they did and talk about how their season's gone so far. Coming up next on the Sports Couch. Stay tuned. It's the local sports talk show that everyone is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9, the Vine and Areasports.net. Real Life Radio would like to thank Cessor Auto Body for their monthly support. They are located at 602 South Park Street in Cessor. At Cessor Auto Body, their slogan is The Collision Pros. The phone number for Tim Pierce and the staff at Cessor Auto Body is 625-3523. We appreciate the underwriting support of Cessor Auto Body in Cessor, making local Christian radio possible on 90.9 The Vine. You've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. Well, there's actually a lot of truth to that, and you can get one-on-one instruction in baseball, softball, basketball, as well as speed and agility drills at the Sports Zone in Fairfield. The Sports Zone has been in business for quite some time now and has helped many area boy and girl athletes excel in their sport of choice. Lessons and practice times are available at convenient times that meet your schedule. The Sports Zone is located on Delaware Street in Fairfield, and we appreciate their support. Underwriting on the Vine is provided by B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon. B&C Bicycle Fitness specializes in bikes for the beginning rider to the high-end racer and can equip you with a comfortable bike to enjoy a healthy, active lifestyle with family and friends. B&C Bicycle Fitness is a full-service bicycle shop and is located at 410 South 27th Street in Mount Vernon. Their phone number is 816-4077. B&C Bicycle Fitness in Mount Vernon where the adventure begins. Welcome back to the Sports Couch. You're live on a Saturday morning on 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine Radio and also streaming live worldwide on both of our websites, live video streaming at areasports.net and live audio streaming at WBYN. 
www.salemwealth.org. I'm Randy Olson, live in studio along with Danny Anselma. Going to talk about the Salem Wildcats right now with head coach Andy Fahrenbacher. He joins us on the phone. Good morning, Andy. How are you? Hello? Are you there? Hey, did we lose Andy? Well, we'll see. Seems like you may have lost Andy there, Randy. So I'll while Randy's uh, redoing that, I'll see if I can uh, pull up some uh, sco- scores. Oh, he's still there. Randy's trying to get him back through here. Are you there now, Andy? Are you there now, Andy? Hello. Hmm. All right. Well, you may need to run through some more scores yeah. there, Danny. Let me cover here for a second. All right. Looking at some uh, girls' scores from Thursday night, Wayne City Lady Indians pick up a victory over Sandoval, 50-30. to Anna Jones World defeated Marion, 49-48. Hamilton County through Johnson City, 35-25. Harrisburg beats DuCoin, 43-25. South Central, 37. Weber Township, 33. The Oakville Lady Rockets, uh, Got a powerhouse team, I guess, over there from what I hear. They are really loaded. They defeat Greenville 62-4. to Edwards County picks up a big win over Hudsonville, 84-38. Uh, Hillsborough over Carlinville. Mount Carmel defeats Murfreesboro, 40-37. to That was from some girls' action. Let's see about some high school boys from last night. Uh, from South 7, Altoff 85, Carbondale 52, Cahokia 42, Mount Vernon 24, and Centralia gives Marion their first loss of the season, 50-25 to last night. Lawrenceville defeats Red Hill, 68-59, and Marshall over Hudsonville, 85-59. Randy's ready to try it again. Well, let's try it again. Andy, we got you now? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you got you. All right, great. Sorry about that. Technology's a wonderful thing when it works, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Andy <laughs> Fahrenbacher, coach of the uh, Salem Wildcats, joins us. Boy, you had yourself a uh, a wild game last night as you opened up uh, conference play as you lost a tight one uh, last night to Taylorville, 49-46. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, um, I, I tell you what, Randy, uh, I, I'm real happy with the way our kids are defending. Mm-hmm. Um, we are really defensively getting out and getting after people and you know, rotating and, and doing everything you're supposed to do on the defense. Then we're just uh, a little stagnant right now offensively. You know, we're we're kind of in, in a position that we're searching for uh, some points out of our lineup or our bench or somewhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it, it, as long as you can defend, uh, keep people under their average, and and, and rebound hard, and cut, cut down on your turnovers, you're always going to be in a ball game. Yeah. Well, you had a, a pretty good start there in the Capital Classic at, at Lawrenceville as you went two and two in the tournament. There, you got a big win over Fairfield, uh, fifty-five to forty-four. You also beat Red Hill, sixty-five thirty-seven. Uh, you lost to a very, very good Marshall team, and then of course you lost to, to Teothopolis as well. So you went two and two to start the season at that tournament. But I think you had to feel pretty good about that, didn't you? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I hate losing as much as anybody, mm-hmm. and it, it bothers me. But at the same time, you know, we're making progress, and um, yeah, we we really overall had, had a pretty good weekend uh, over at, at Lawrence County. And like I said, uh, the Fairfield win was a good win because they they got a nice team. Coach McIlroy does a good job, and 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 that team's going to win a lot of games this year. So I was real happy with that win. Yeah, I thought that was a real quality win for you. I thought, yeah. Oh, yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, they're scrappy, and, and they get after you, and, uh, you know, they do a lot of good things. So, like I said, I expect them to win a lot of games. And uh, Red Hill's kind of young, you know, yet, but uh, they'll, they'll come around another year or two. So, you know, those are good wins. And Marshall is uh, really talented, uh, got a lot of offensive firepower, and, uh, you know, that one just got away from us just a bit. And then, uh, of course, the T-Town game, um, you know, we fought hard. We had a real slow start got down like 11 to 2 or something like that but uh, I felt second half we were more than even with them in fact we outscored them and, and beat them in the second half I usually always break down a game by by quarters and halves and all that kind of stuff so mm-hmm. you know if, if we would have been uh, a little more ready from the get-go in that in that T-Town game who knows but mm-hmm. uh, you know and they had one kid in particular that, that went off and had a big night but uh, everyone else we held in check we just yeah. needed to do a better job on the one kid so yeah. you know that's kind of how that that tournament went yeah, was that a little surreal for you, coaching against uh, your, your former school and former team in, in T-Town, the fact that you knew some of those kids? Was that uh, a little bit different being on the other side? 
Uh, yeah, it, it was uh, an, a very emotional game for me. Um, it, it was, uh, you know, I did the best I could do, uh, you know, and, and uh, it, it was it was it was difficult. Mm-hmm. It, it, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Sure. Uh, and, and I knew I knew every kid, and in fact, every at every point in that entire game, every single kid on the floor, I have I had coached and, and had a, a player coach relationship with. You know, wow. the whole time. Yeah, so, sure. So you know, when, when you're looking at that, knowing that you've worked with and 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 had an impact on every single kid on the floor, you know that that's it. it, it you know, it, and on one hand, it, it's with with everything that went on, it, it was it was emotional and, and upsetting. But on the other hand, it was it was satisfying. You know, so I, it, my emotions were really all over the place that game. But I, you know, had to do what I had to do and keep my head and, and concentrate and coach hard. And you know, I, I felt we gave our kids a, a had a good game plan and and uh, you know and we adjusted as as the game went along and actually got better as the game went along and you know just couldn't quite get over the hump and unfortunately that's kind of been the case this year mm-hmm. well for those people who are watching our live video stream right now on uh, area sports.net we've got a team picture of your salem wildcats up on the screen right now so let's give you a chance to kind of run through your starters your key players off the bench right now and and kind of uh, let people know uh, what to expect from the salem wildcats this year all right well um Two players that's that's been at the varsity level for three years now. Uh, one being uh, number 24, Brendan Bowles, and uh, he made all tournament uh, there at uh, at Lawrence County and uh, at the Capital Classic, and he had a really good tournament. Uh, you know, he he's been around the game his whole life, and and uh, of course his dad was a coach at one time. You know, so he 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 gets it and he knows what's going on, and and he's really stepping up, being a good leader for us, and and doing some great things. Um, you know, and, and we'll continue to expect that throughout the season from him, and, and he accepts that responsibility. So, you know, we, he's he's one guy that you'll see, you know, on the floor of course pretty much at all times. And, and then Cole Stewart is uh, the other senior who uh, has, has been around at the varsity level for three years now, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's got a great body to him, big kid, and, and strong inside, and, and still, you know, he's, he's learning some things. I mean, there's no doubt about it, football's always been, Number one with him, and he's an excellent football player. But I tell you, he's he's really coming on on the basketball court and doing also great things for us. And and he's so reliable that I know what I can get out of him every night. And and, and defensively, he does a great job in the post, and and he boards really really hard. So, you know, those those guys are definitely our stability. And then, yeah, we, we have two other seniors, uh, uh, Connor Brooks, who who starts for us, and and uh, you know he he's long uh, and. Uh, he, he's he's a good shooter. He's in a shooting slump right now. He's really struggling, and we're going to have to find a way out of that and fix that with him. But uh, you know, when he can get on a roll, he can he can hit buckets. And like I said, he's a long perimeter player that uh, is also learning defensively how to use his arms and length to get after people. He's number five, and then uh, the other senior we have at uh, 31, Chris Watkins, comes off the bench, and uh, he does a real nice nice job too. Is coming in and, and basically he's pretty versatile and being able to uh, run the three, four, or five spots for us in any, any, any place we need. And, and I think he's had a nice start to the season and given us quality minutes. Um, as far as some of the other kids, uh, Dawson Linder, number 20, is our point guard. And uh, he has put so much time in in the offseason. And he's really, I mean, he was pretty strong for us last year as a sophomore. But he's really come on right now as a junior and doing a great job handling the ball. I mean, our turnovers overall as a team has gone down dramatically from last year to this year, and uh, he's a big reason for that. And, and he's totally bought in, and, and and he believes in everything that that I or the other coaches that we tell him. And, and he's he's all in, he's all there. And you know, I, I've got nothing but great things to say about Dawson. Um, Demon Crosby, number twenty-three. Uh, he, he's long, athletic. He's got a lot of a lot of skill. He's got a. He's got such an upside to him that he hasn't even really scratched the surface of, in my opinion. That he can. He can really, as this season moves along, I look for him to just get better and better. And then he still has another year next year. And he's the type that. I mean, if we need something, if if, if you know, if a team's really guarding us hard and taking us out of our offense, he can go get a shot. He can, he can go make something happen. I mean, he can set people up. So, you know, he's that kind of that X factor that you got to have. Uh, and he's getting better defensively. And then Caden Ware, uh, number 15, is a strong lefty inside uh, who's, who's got a, a also just a great athletic build to him. And, 
you know, he too is kind of learning the game as, as we move along here and, and, and is improving. So, you know, that's our top seven. And then we have other kids. Max Phillips, number 11, is a JV player, but comes off the bench for us at, at a guard position. Sean Reed, 25, is really athletic and can come in off the bench at, at a forward spot. So, you know, we we definitely play seven, and then we can go two more. So I, I feel pretty comfortable playing nine kids right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, so we got some pretty good depth. Yeah, that's great. Well, I appreciate you running through the team and also running through the the numbers too, because people are again are watching on the screen can kind of put those uh, names and numbers together and, and realize who you're talking about there. So that's that's real right. helpful. Now, this is going to be your final year in the Apollo Conference, and you're going to be shifting conferences, right? Yeah, and that couldn't come fast enough, and I'm very <laughs> thankful for that. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm sorry, but I'm sick and tired of going an hour and forty five to two hours to ball games up yeah. in the central part of the state. I just I'm tired of doing it. Yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, I do see a, a couple other teams on your on your schedule, though, I think that are kind of interesting that you're going to be playing this year. I see um, next Saturday, a week from today, you're going down to West Frankfurt to play in the big Max Morris gym against West Frankfurt. That'll be good. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm certainly looking forward to that. And, uh, it's such a, a historic venue, and, and it's a neat place, and, and I think uh, kids don't know about it. And then when they walk in there, they're like, wow, you know, <laughs> this is really something. So. Um, yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to that, and I got nothing but all the respect in the world for Coach Tony. He, he's just he's just an an, an excellent human being. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, he he is a great coach and works so hard. And uh, you know, uh, we we matched up with him last year in the regional, and we were very fortunate to come out with a win there. And I know he'll have his team prepared, but uh, yeah, that that was a great pickup for us. You know, it's 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 an easy trip just down the down 57 there, and uh, you know maybe. The, we need, you know, and that's that's the thing with going to the the Cahokia Conference. You, you know, we'll have closer, closer uh, games. Uh, I think we're, more towns that are in, you know, here in Southern Illinois, where our people here in town can relate to. I, I mean, they're, they're just. I've only this on my second year here, but you know, I, we don't we don't have rivalries with really anybody in the Apollo. It, and it's just. You know, our, our the people in town, they, they it's just, you know, it, I, it's not a real good fit. I'll, I'll just write what's happened with the Apollo and the direction they're going. It, it's it's more than obvious that we needed to go. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And don't you, Danny? I think I think a fit in the Cahokia Conference would be great for Salem. Oh, I see a, oh. I see a lot of games that there's going to be great backing. And, uh, you know, it's like you said, folks aren't going to get out and travel two hours to go watch a high school basketball game. But, but if they no, can drive, no, if they can drive down the road thirty minutes, uh, and they're going to play some people that they probably work with and are associated with, exactly. and they see out on the street, uh, they're going to go just with the hope that hey, we can beat you, so I can get bragging rights for a week. Yeah, you got you got Carlisle yeah, and Bree Central, Trent Westland. That'll be great. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to it. There's some excellent coaches in in that conference. Uh, there's some good tradition in that conference. I mean it's. It's not like it's going to get easy or anything like that. It's going to be difficult. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about that. But like you just said, it, it, it's 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 schools and towns that are much more relatable to to our uh, to our crowd and our our followers. Yeah. So I, I think it'll certainly help our crowd, uh, crowd size and, and atmospheric games. And uh, it's just all across the board. It's just better for us and everything. It'd just be a great fit for you. Looks to me like Andy. Yeah. 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 Certainly is. Certainly well, is. Looking ahead, uh, your schedule too. I, I noticed you got a couple uh, old NEC teams on your schedule in February. You're going to play both Flora and Olney, and then also uh, on your senior night, you got the Benton Rangers come to town. That'll be a good battle. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and again, those are towns and schools that are down in this neck of the woods that that I, I think it's good. I, you know, and you know, as far as the old NEC with playing uh, Olney and, and Florida, I mean, that is a big reason why we look to get in that Capital Classic because sure. I mean, six of the eight teams in it are, are old NEC teams. So, you know, you spark a little bit of those old rivalries and see some familiar faces there. Uh, you know, that, that's that, that's what we need. We, we really do. So I, I'm excited about those games. You know, of course, I'm from Florida and played for Florida, and, mm-hmm. and I think that's really cool that they're coming over here uh, this year and, and – and, Coach Lee, you know, again, another guy just has nothing but the utmost respect for. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so so that will be a lot of fun playing them. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah, we, and with Benton, you know, we played them last year in a very tight game and, and went to overtime with them, and they had a really good team. And I know they're going to have a strong team again this year as well. So that, that'll be a good test. It certainly will. Be a good test for you, but uh... – I don't think you'll have with Flora Coach Lee probably won't have those wolves ready to play, will he? 
That'll, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that will be a lot of fun, actually. And again, that that was an old rivalry. I mean, the Salem, you know, the Salem floor rivalry oh, yeah. it was always big, and it, and it'll it can be that way again. You know. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That and, and that's what we need to get back to here. Yeah. And, you know, again, playing Taylorville and Mount Zion and Matt too. I, I mean, there's no connection, just, no connection, no connection there. None, none at all, none yeah. at all. And, and it's you know, and, and that's why it, it's just it's it's long overdue that that it's time to go. I mean, I think. At the time when the NEC broke up and, and Salem was, was looking where to go, I mean, obviously I wasn't here at that time, but I think that was the direction that they needed to go. Because, you know, you had Olney that jumped into that. Right. And, you know, and, and you still had Newton and Robinson and some of those things. Well, all of them got out. So it's just, you know, we're sitting here on the very southern edge of that thing. Right. And, and you know, and, and then they talk about, you know, they're picking up Muhammad and Lincoln and, and some other schools that they're looking at up, uh, up further north of Champaign. I mean, that that's ridiculous for yeah. us. I mean, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. We no, got to no, no, I agree. Definitely agree. Your Salem Invitational Tournament later on in January, any new wrinkles to that tournament this year, Coach? Well, uh, Triad is in this year. Okay. Uh, they, yeah, they got back in. Uh, they have been in it before, from what I understand. And, mm-hmm. and they're back in. And they, they got a nice team. They won a Thanksgiving tournament they were in. So. All right. It, it's going to be as strong as ever, and my goodness, you know, when you look at Edwardsville, who beat Alltop last week, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. right, right there. Number one is pretty doggone tough. So, yeah, that might be the uh, only game that Alltop loses all year. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very much <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, and of course, there's another coach lead that. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was he was my idol as a kid growing up. I mean, he 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 played for the for the Flora Wolves in the yeah. 80s there. And I was a kid, you know, in, in elementary school, and and uh, I mean, he's the one that I looked up to whenever I played on my my uh, my court at home outside. I was always Greg Lee. So yeah, well, we keep asking around. we keep asking Phil why he doesn't ask Greg for a couple of players. It seems like Greg's got enough players; he got to be alone. Phil, a couple, don't you think? He says well, yeah, he yeah. says he won't share players with him, and he said he don't share at the dinner table at Christmas and Thanksgiving <laughs> either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Greg. Greg's a, a, a super guy, but I, yeah, I think when it comes to those things, he's pretty. You know, it's yeah. the way it is. So. Well, I <laughs> nah, think he's awesome. I think that team he's got this year is probably good enough to win four A. They they could be the first team to win three A and four A back to back. I mean, they seriously could oh, do that. You know, without a doubt, without a doubt, it wouldn't shock me in the least. Yeah. I, I mean, he has got some some players, and they are stacked. Yeah, and, and they they are good. Really yeah, are. if you could just get one of those for your Salem Wildcats, <laughs> what an impact that would be. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can take one and yeah. or two or four or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Hand out, you know, but, oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, let's see uh, what's next on the schedule for your Salem Wildcats then. Well, um, we're off until Friday next week. We have Charleston at home, and uh, so you know we finally get to play a home game. And yeah. you know, sometimes that's just how the schedule works out. But right. uh, uh, we'll, our kids will definitely be excited to, to play at home. I, I, you know, even though we're sitting two and four right now, um, I, you know, I, the last three games we've dropped by a grand total of combined fourteen points. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're hanging in. We're right there. Uh, five of the six teams that we've played to this point, we've held the 50 uh, or under 50 points. So we're defending. It's just we got to somehow generate a little bit more offense. And, you know, if we, and if we can do that, then we can turn some of these losses around to wins. And, right. You know, I'm, we, sure, we could vary, I'm sure you're working on a plan easily. to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But we could very easily be four and two right now. Sure. I, I mean, it, it's, uh, we lost them to Scooter by three and uh, or four, and last night we lost by three, and, and and they were tight games, and just a couple possessions go a little differently. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a difference in the game. So, but I, I think our kids are will be real excited to play at home. I think we'll have a good crowd here, and uh, you know, definitely a winnable game for us. Uh, you know, it's not going to be handed. It's not. It's not easy, but uh, you know, Charleston will, will show up and compete hard. But uh, we have them on, on Friday, and then we turn around and go down to Frankfurt on, on mm-hmm. Saturday. So we have back-to-back there. Yeah, that's cool. Well, Andy, again, uh, we think you're a great fit there at Salem. I think the Wildcats have got somebody special there in their program. I'm sure the town and community and schools is happy to have you there. And I know that you're going to continue to build the program there and have success. So hang in there, and we'll be uh, continuing to talk to you down the line. So thanks for joining us this morning on the Sports Couch, all right? Well, Thanks a lot, Randy. I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, that means a lot coming from you. It really, really does. So 
I appreciate it. We're going to work as hard as we can and do the best we can. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to right the ship and, and do what we need to do. All right. Keep working hard. We'll talk to you later. Have a good weekend. All right. Will do. You too. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. That's Andy Fahrenbacher, head coach of the Salem Wildcats, off to a two and four start. But as you heard him say, Danny, I mean, you know, he's. Lost they could be four and two very easily. easily. Lost a game last night by three, and then lost a tight one to Mascudo as well. And uh, he's going to turn that that program around. And, he's and I, already turned it. Well, around he right has. Now. You're right about that. He already has. I mean, just the the attitude and the perception, and perception is reality. You know. Oh yeah. And uh, they're a lot more excited about basketball in Salem now than what they have been in in many many years. And getting out of that Apollo Conference after this year and getting in that Cahokia Conference, man, that's going to make a huge difference. Especially with the fans. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, the competition level. But even for the kids, when that mm -hmm. gym is full, Randy, mm -hmm. I cannot tell you what you've experienced and I've yeah. experienced it. People that's never experienced it, you do not know what it feels like when you come out of that mm -hmm. hall or that yeah. tunnel or whatever and people are on their feet, standing. Last night we went to Thompsonville, small 1A school. Mm -hmm. That place was packed. Yeah. It was jam-packed, full of people. Yeah. They turned out the lights, and they held flashlights all over this whole thing. <laughs> That's great. When they introduced the starting lineup. That's great. And I'm telling you, it just sent chills yeah. up my spine. That was old still. school, man. That, that was, was old, school. old school. I love it. That's great. We turned out the lights in Hamilton <laughs> County, McLeansboro, when I played there. And they had a big spotlight up in the band room, and we played out to the Chicago Bulls thing, and we uh -huh, ran out of this yep. lineup. And yeah, it's just memories that are made that you never forget. Yeah. Well, I think when they get into that Cahokia Conference, you're going to see a big rivalry develop between Salem and Carlisle. You know, I oh mean, yeah, just down the road from each other, Andy Palmer, Coach Carlisle, and and Andy Fehrenbacher there at uh, the two Andys from Salem. Uh, that's going to be a special game every year. Oh, and, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, it really is, and that's going to be exciting. And that, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, you look forward to having those kind of things in your community, and uh, uh, what a great hire by Salem right yeah, there. Yeah, no, it really is. Hey, we're out of time. We've went over time. We need to get out of here, but we appreciate all the guests being on with us uh, today. And uh, one quick thing we want to remind people about tonight, don't we? Yeah. Uh, if you want to see a good junior high basketball game tonight, it's the championship of the Wayne City Tournament tonight. Woodlawn against Fairfield Colts. We've got a, a picture of the Fairfield Colts up on the screen right now. Uh, Fairfield comes in undefeated at 11-0. and uh, They'll be doing battle tonight at Wayne City in that championship game. If you can't make it out there, we will be there to broadcast the game for you and have it live video streamed for you on our sports website at areasports.net. So uh, that'll tip off tonight, I don't know, roughly 7.30, something like that, I think. So, yeah. Should be a great deal. They, I'm anxious to see this Fairfield team. They say they are flat-loaded. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Woodlawn will have their hands full tonight. But you never know. That's Woodlawn's, why you play the game. Woodlawn's got a good team also. Oh, they do. They do, yeah. They got some size and mm -hmm. some shooters. Uh, they finished second up there at that Rome tournament. Mm -hmm. And you look to see them down there at that junior high state tournament in Class S. Yeah. Yeah, and Fairfield is Class M. you have anything else you want to add? Cardinals make a big trade this week. Yeah, yeah, they get rid of Jaime Garcia, get some prospects. I think that maybe that's the precursor of something else that's still about to come. Uh, I think we're going to see some packaging going on here real soon to get a, an outfielder. And well, the Cardinals have shed $38 million in payroll. Right. They've got – not that they didn't have money before, but they've got more money now. Yeah, I agree. I think that there's a big deal for an outfielder coming – here real soon, whether it's by trade or by signing a free agent. And there's been other rumblings, too, of, of possibly uh, something that could happen with uh, another player or two. But uh, definitely an outfielder has got to be the key. And also your good friend, Frank Cusimano, is now the director of He's sports. He's the sports director of KSDK TV KSD. Channel 5. So, so we'll continue to have Frank on with us. So uh, It's always yeah. nice to have good contact. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, it is, so it's always good to have people like that. So we'll have him back on have to talk to him about that, won't we? Yeah. We sure will. All right, well, have a great weekend, everybody. And, again, we'll have a basketball for you tonight from the Wayne City Junior High Tournament Championship game. We'll be back here next Saturday morning at 830. It's 90 minutes of great local sports talk, or 100 minutes as it's it was the today. local sports talk <laughs> show that See you next week. is talking about. It's the Sports Couch on 90.9. The Vine and Areasports.net.
This is your home for best Christian music. WVYN, Bluford Wayne City, Fairfield, Mount Vernon. And now on Translator, W288CO Centralia, broadcasting at 105.5. A service of Real Life Radio.